Hi, my name is Sana and I was in the Experiential Archive Group. The objective of our research was to create an engaging and interactive way to experience archival material. To begin our research process, we focused on investigating three main aspects of an engaging website. The digital archive, the web-based interface, and the developmental tools. We started by exploring Duke's digital archive collection online. Each of us focused on a few specific archives and asked ourselves what each archive raises questions about. Simultaneously, we begin to explore existing web-based interfaces. We analyze the effectiveness of each interface, how interactive it was, and how it was contextualized within the source material. We then begin to explore developmental tools and or technology that would create the interaction between the viewer and the website. We explored examples of voice recognition, facial detection, virtual reality, and more. Finally, we combined these three elements and we each created individual proposals for a website. We split into two separate groups based on the two different archives that were picked, one about the history of advertisement in the United States and another called Women the World Over. The proposal that our group picked was based on the archive The Emergence of Advertising in America, which included a variety of historical advertisements from 1850 to 1920. And we chose this archive because it presents a glimpse into the development of American business, industry, and marketing that makes up such a large part of our consumer culture today. This archive is also especially relevant because it shows historical advertisements of many of the products we still use today. Like for example, cologne, milk, chocolate, beauty creams, cameras, etc. While we were looking at these historical advertisements for products we still see today, we noticed the drastic differences between the advertisements for those products from the past to now. This raised the question, what factors in American history caused the evolution for these advertisement techniques? To make the archival material more relevant and more meaningful, we decided to incorporate a comparative aspect of advertisements for the same product from the past to now. Simultaneously, as we were developing an idea for how to present this on a web-based interface, we began to do more in-depth research about how advertisements for two products chocolate and jello have changed over time. So this is how the historical ad for jello looked in the digital archive. Um, and this is how the historical ad for chocolate looked in the digital archive. Um, so after we completed our research on the changes between the past and the present, we worked on inputting this content into our web-based interface. And Crystal is going to go more into how we created the actual interface and how we presented this content in an engaging way. Thank you, Sana. Um, so after that, in order to draw interest and attention to this particular archive, we really wanted to give our users the prioritized ability to form an emotional connection with the archival materials that we select. And one of the best experiential technologies nowadays is immersive virtual reality, um, where we positioned our, uh, the day-to-day -day advertising objects into a living space. And upon entering the scene, users use their mouse and keyboard to navigate the scene while locating objects that are, are selectable. This is the initial screen that we have, which includes introduction to the archives selected. Upon entering the scene, this is in this kitchen scene as users navigate within the scene it is clear that there are two objects in this space that are selectable, the jello and the chocolate bar on the counter. How do you know? If it is selectable, a beam of spotlight will shine onto the object where users are then welcome to click on the object that leads them to a third space where more information about the past and present advertising strategies for this, um, for this particular product is documented. So as you can see, this is the old ad for chocolate um, from 1899 to 1925. And then if we go to the next page, this is the current and present advertising for chocolate. The coding language and platform our team chose here is called A-Frame. Um, A-Frame is a web framework for building virtual reality experience. And what our team loved most about A-Frame is its ability to 
demo VR almost instantly within the very same HTML coding space. Um, plus, without any installations, A-Frame is accessible and user-friendly to everyone. We also think that there are a few important implications for using VR to demonstrate archival materials. Archives are sometimes deemed by the general public as only available to researchers or academia, but by using VR, we could then create a new way of interacting with these archival materials by creating a more engaging environment for active learning and memory recall. It's much easier um, for some people to learn something while experiencing it. Instead of processing a large amount of information contained in an archive, users can then immerse themselves with the material firsthand. Um, this could inspire our users to discover and work things out for themselves and maybe encourage them to go back to the actual archive um, in the library to research more um, for their own interests after. I'm Dennis. Me and Surya worked with Brittany on the other half of the Experiential Archive project. Our group also decided to work with a VR room, but our process was a little different. We chose to work with the Women the World Over Archive, which was a collection of photos of women around the world between 19, 1892 and 1901. We thought it would be interesting to explore the everyday lives of different women and how they differ from ours in the U.S. in 2020. Brittany and Aaron thought it'd be interesting to include the concept of male and the imperial gaze, where different gazes and relationships alter the way the users view the same people or object based on historical or cultural factors. Um, the photos in the archives themselves were an example of gaze. They depict the lives of women from a male and or colonial perspective. That's at least that's our assumption based on when the archive was created and who published it, which is a company in Britain. Um, so for example, photographing these women as objects for the pleasure or satisfaction of male European viewers, such as this image of the woman who's on the cover of the archive, um, is kind of an example of this gaze. Right, so we thought we could incorporate this idea of gaze into our project by creating a spinner that gives the user a random photo from the archive and a location-based identity. Different combinations of these two would lead people into different virtual re uh, environments. So for our demo, we created, we started with an image of a couple from Abeokuta, Nigeria, and mapped out different potential viewing perspectives. We created three separate VR rooms for the Nigerian archive photo to represent how the woman in the photo might have been viewed from an Asian, European, or African perspective in the time period the photo was taken. Again, right at the turn of the 20th century. So this first room is uh, a view from the European perspective. So I created a museum of photos from colonial Nigeria because Nigeria just became a British colony in 1900. I wrote the photo descriptions using a very paternalistic tone of a colonist who likely looked down on the people of Nigeria. Uh, so it was very condescending. And to make this room, a lot of background research was done on the colonial relationship between Britain and Nigeria, specifically how Christianity, slavery, and trade influenced traditions in the region. So for the African perspective, I created a replication of the environment shown in the archive photo itself. Um, there appear to be two houses, as you can see here, and a tree in the background. So those are here in the, in the VR environment. Due to our limited resources, this is a pretty rough approximation of what the environment in the photo might have actually been like at the time. Um, in this part of Nigeria, which was the land of the Egba people, um, originally, women were pretty much equal to men in terms of their social standing because everything was based on your economic power. Um, but as the British colonized the area and kind of brought their own beliefs over and brought Christianity over, women such as the couple in the photo who are a Christian couple um, sort of had their position in society sort of start to resemble what we're used to in terms of Western um, gender politics where women are a little bit lower than men. And for the Asian perspective, the room that you see is all black because the interactions between people living in Asia and like a couple living in Abiyokuta, Nigeria would have been extremely limited at the time. This specific project focused on the global perspectives of Nigerian people and women in particular in the year 1900, but it could be expanded to apply to any photo in the archive. Our overall goal was to create a compelling and interactive way to present history and its archival material. And I think this combination of the VR environment and assuming different points of view or identities suggests the users should not only consider the by the book facts of that archival piece and its surrounding history, but also how our perspectives or other historical 
perspectives inform the way that we perceive and understand a subject matter.